Hey, it's Anthony Crazy on marketing.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build some automations within your Active Campaign account. Now, these are several automations that I build across pretty much every Active Campaign account I've ever been in. And of course, there's like a million and one different ways you can build automations and things you can do with automations. So, sky is really the limit. But hopefully, this video will give you some ideas of how you can build different automations within your account. So, the first automation we're going to go ahead and build is a lead magnet delivery automation. So that way, you're emailing your new subscribers a lead magnet that you promised them. We'll also set up a drip series that sells a product or service that you have, and we'll also create a purchase automation that delivers that product or service if the individual buys the product or service. So we got three automations we're going to go ahead and build in this video. Let's get into it. So I'm in Active Campaign here and of course I went to automations and then on the top right corner we can go ahead and create an automation. And we're going to go ahead and start from scratch and continue. Now we need to go ahead and select a trigger and there's a bunch of different options here and ultimately it depends how you want to set things up like subscribes to a list could be a good one or if you have a specific form set up for this particular lead magnet you could go ahead and select that option. But most of my automations start with tag. So I'm going to go ahead and select this option. But again, there's a million different ways you could go ahead and create these automations. I'm just showing you the way that I do it. So this automation will start when the tag LM free sales funnels is applied to someone's account. Now I can also select whether to run this once or multiple times. I'm going to go ahead and do multiple times just in case somebody opts in for this lead magnet and then forgets that they opted in for it. And then four months later, they opt in for it again. I want them to receive it again. So that's why I'm going to go ahead and set it for multiple times. And I'm not going to segment contacts entering this automation. We'll go ahead and click on start. And so the first thing I want to go ahead and do is actually send them the lead magnet. So we'll do send an email and then I'm going to go ahead and name this email. So let's go ahead and name it. And to keep things consistent, I'm going to name it the same name as the tag. So LM and then free sales funnels and then email one. So I know it's the first email in this particular email series. Then we can go ahead and design our email and I have a video on email design so we're not going to go into designing an email. I'm just going to do save and design later. And so there we go. My first email is in place. Now of course within this email I'd be like hey here's your lead magnet. Click here to go download it. Yada yada stuff like that. And let's come up here and name the automation as well. So I've got LM free sales funnels right there and click on save. So I'm trying to keep the naming conventions all the same all the way across. So that way I can keep track of everything. Alrighty, so the next thing I want to go ahead and do is wait a couple days. So I'm going to go ahead and add a conditions and workflow and a wait. And I'm going to go ahead and wait for a period of time. And I'm going to go ahead and wait for two days and save. And then we're going to come on down here and click the plus button. I'm going to do an if else statement right here. And so in this case, I want to check to see if they're opening emails or clicking on links in emails. So that way I know that they're like an active subscriber. They're looking at things, things like that. So we'll go to actions here and I want to do has opened and I'm going to leave it at any email. So any email in the last, we'll do 14 days. So maybe they're already been subscribed to my list and they've already been opening emails. Well, then those people will count in this if else statement. So that's why I do a 14 day window. And I'm going to go ahead and add another condition as well. And I'm going to change this to an or statement and actions. And I'm going to go ahead and do has clicked on a link. So any email, any link in the last 14 days as well. So if the individual has opened an email in the last 14 days or clicked on a link in an email in the last 14 days, well then they'll go down the yes side of this conditional statement. So then we'll go ahead and click on save right here. Alrighty, let's go ahead and build out the no line first. So if they have not opened an email in the last 14 days or clicked on a link in the last 14 days, what I want them to do, let's go ahead and send them another email. So we'll go ahead and send an email and in this case, this will be the second email in the series. So we have LM free sales funnels email two. I'm going to go ahead and save and design this one later as well. Alrighty. So of course, in this one, I'd be like, hey, a couple days ago, you requested this lead magnet. Doesn't look like you downloaded it. Here's a link to it again. And yada, 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 stuff like that. All right. Then I'm going to go ahead and do another wait here. So I'll do a conditions and workflow wait. We'll just wait another two days and save. And let's come down here and do another if else statement, if else. And we're going to see if they've opened an email, has opened an email in the last 14 days and or, sorry, or clicked a link in an email in the last 14 days. And you might be wondering why I do both open an email or click a link. Well, some email clients don't let Active Campaign know when an email has been opened, like they block that aspect. So somebody might have opened an email, but Active Campaign doesn't know that they opened the email. But if they click a link in the email, like obviously they've opened the email, read the email, and clicked the link in the email. So this is even higher engagement in your emails. And so I, I track for both of them, just, just in case. So there we go, same if else statement as before. We'll go ahead and click on save now. So let's go ahead and address this no side first. So in order to get here, they'd have to request a lead magnet and then not click or open it for two days and then 
receive a second email about it and not click and open it for two days. So maybe this email address, you know, is no good. They put a dud email address in there and we don't want to keep sending them emails because it's going to hurt our email deliverability if we keep sending it to like bad email addresses or email addresses that, you know, don't open our email. So I'm going to go ahead and just put a wait here and I'm going to just wait for a specific period of time and maybe I'll do five years. And we'll go ahead and click on save right there. So that way anybody that gets down here will just be queued up. If I wanted to, I could go ahead and add additional actions under here. So maybe I decide that I want to go ahead and send them additional email. So maybe I'd go ahead and add them to another automation. So start another automation or something like that. And then I could go over here and then I could reduce my wait limit to maybe like three days or something like that. And then they'd go into another automation for filtering or something, you know, whatever it is you might want to do. But this is how I would initially configure this particular automation right here. Let me go ahead and delete this one out of there so anyway that's what I'd go ahead and set up so let's come back up here to the top here so let's say that they request their lead magnet and we wait for two days and they have opened or clicked a link in an email so they're an active email subscriber what do I want to do with them next well let's come over to the yes block right here so yes and in this case I'm gonna go ahead and add a tag so we'll come to contacts here and add a tag and I'm gonna go ahead and add a delivered LM free sales funnels so they've received the free sales funnels lead magnet we'll go ahead and click on save and then I'm also going to go ahead and remove a tag. We're going to go ahead and remove the LM free sales funnel tag. So the reason that I am removing it now is because they now have the delivered tag on here. And also in order to re-trigger this automation, remember how I made it so that it would run multiple times? Like they have to have this tag removed in order to have it added back in order to in order to trigger the automation again. So that's why I go ahead and remove it. So that way they can get it again to trigger the automation, but I still leave that delivered one on here. So that way I know that they were delivered the free sales funnels lead magnet. And then I'm gonna add one more tag right here. So I'll click the plus button and we'll add a tag. And in this case, I'm going to bring them to my sales series that is selling my sales funnel book. So we'll do sales series, sales funnel book. So we'll add this tag to their profile and we're gonna create an automation to sell the sales funnel book. So I'll go ahead and click on save. And that's pretty much all I need for this one right here. And then we have one more yes block over here. So if they've received the second email and then two more days have gone by and then they've clicked a link or open an email, they're basically in the same boat as these people up here that opened the first email, right? So we'll go ahead and click this plus button here and we'll go to conditions and workflow and we'll go to another action and we'll drag it up here and they'll go through the same series of adding and removing tags as these other yes people. And that is pretty much it for my lead magnet delivery automation. Most of them look like this. And if you didn't know already, the nice part about active campaign is you can clone things. So if you create your lead magnet automation and you like it, you can just come over here and you can copy it. And then you can go ahead and use it for, you know, another lead magnet that you have. And then you can just change out the tags and the email content and you don't have to recreate the whole automation. So anyway, the next automation we want to go ahead and create is just a drip series trying to sell the sales funnel book. So I'm going to go ahead and create a brand new automation and we'll go ahead and start this one from scratch and continue. And I'm going to start this automation when a tag is added and then I have my sales, sales series tag that's going to trigger this automation. And I'm only going to run this automation one time because they only need to be sold to one time, at least with this particular series. So we'll go ahead and do add start. And then the first thing we'll go ahead and do is send them an email. So using the same naming convention as my tag, we have sales series, sales funnel book, and then email one. And then I'd go ahead and create my email, you know, try and sell my book, but we'll do save and design later. And let's go ahead and name our automation up here before we forget. So come up to the top and sales series, sales funnel book, save. All right, and then we'll just go ahead and add in another wait and we'll wait for a couple days and save and then we'll go ahead and send email number two trying to sell our sales funnel book and maybe we'll go ahead and wait for another couple days and try and sell it one more time so let's go ahead and send an email and this would be email three and save and design later. Alrighty, so we now have three emails being sent to our subscribers over the course of about four days trying to sell our sales funnel book. And as you can see, it's a pretty straightforward automation, but we do want to add a couple things to it. So first things first, we want to go ahead and add a goal to it. So if somebody does buy our sales funnel book, we probably don't need to keep sending them emails trying to sell them the sales funnel book. So let's go ahead and add a goal. So conditions and workflow, and we'll go to goal. So this lets you jump to an action in the automation when the contact matches certain conditions. So let's go ahead and do that. And I wrote out purchase sales funnel book. And so that'll be the same name as the tag as well. So jump to this action when the goal conditions are met. So if they have tag, 
Let's see, tag exists, and we'll add our purchase sales funnel book tag right there. And when the goal is below contacts position, and if the contact does not meet the goal conditions, we can continue anyway, or we can wait until conditions are met or end this automation. So a few different options. I'm gonna go ahead and do continue anyway, and we'll go ahead and click on save then. And I actually wanna go ahead and add another wait after email three. So that way we give them two days after email three to go ahead and buy the book as well. So. Let's go ahead and wait two more days, two days, and save. Alrighty, so that's a pretty straightforward automation right there. Basically, they're going to be receiving three emails trying to sell them the sales funnel book. If they happen to buy the book within any of these emails or any of these days, they'll automatically move through the automation down here to the goal, and they won't receive any more emails. So basically, if they buy it during email one, they'll skip over emails two and three and come straight down here to the goal. And then after the goal, we can go ahead and send them somewhere else. So maybe we have another sales series that we want to send them to or we want to start sending them content or we want to send them broadcast emails or whatever it is you might want to go ahead and do so it just depends on your business and your marketing approach but this is a typical sales series that i would go ahead and create now let's go ahead and create an automation for if they actually buy the book so let's go ahead and come out to automations here and we'll go ahead and start from scratch again and continue and like my other two automations i'm going to go ahead and trigger this one when a tag is added so tag is added and this one would be purchase sales funnel book right here and I'm going to go ahead and leave it on runs once because they should only really need to buy this one time and we'll go ahead and click on add start and then of course I want to go ahead and send them an email and we got our purchase sales funnel book email one I'll go ahead and click on save and design later now of course within this email I'll go ahead and describe how to access their product and all that type of stuff so this is where you go ahead and say like hey thanks for your purchase here's the download link etc simple stuff like that and of course I'd go ahead and name this automation the same name as my tag so we'll name it up there and then depending on what you might want to do next, you might bring them to another sales series in order to try and upsell them on another product or service you may have. So maybe you want to go ahead and conditions workflow, wait for a couple days, and then you'll go ahead and trigger a brand new sales series. So we'll do a sales series. So we'll come to contacts, add tag, and we'll do sales series and whatever, ups, upsell product. So then we go ahead and create a whole nother email automation sales series that's trying to sell them on the upsell to the sales funnel book purchase that they already purchased. But of course, do whatever makes sense for your business. Now let's come back out here to the automations area again. And one thing to make sure you always do is make sure that you activate your automations. There's been so many times that I have not turned on my automations before trying to push people through them and it just causes a headache. So you can go ahead and select them all and then do set active and there you go. So now your automations will actually work and deliver emails and move people around and all that other type of stuff. So make sure you turn on your automations or you're gonna run into some major issues. But hopefully this video helped you out a little bit, give you some ideas on how to build some automations and how to connect them together. Like you definitely wanna build modular type automations. They can go ahead and connect together instead of building like some giant massive automation. Otherwise it's gonna be very, very hard to manage. So try and figure out how you can break down different actions into different separate automations and it'll make your life a whole lot easier. Anyway, that's it for this video. Hopefully you found it helpful. If you did, I appreciate it. Sort of likes, comments, subscribes, and or check out crazyoutmarketing.com and I hope you have a great rest of the day.